wanted to talk for a moment about relapse. This is something that we are exploring and talking about in my month program. And I think it's really important. Um, a lot of people could get something from it. So relapse, specifically relapse and shame. So there's so much shame and stigma attached to relapse but relapse is a component of most people's recovery. The relapse rates are extremely high. And in some definitions, Gabor Mate's definition, for example, of addiction involves the component of relapse. It's a relapsing condition. Addiction is a relapsing condition. So why do we stigmatize and shame it so much when it's part of it? It doesn't mean that you have to relapse or that we're encouraging or welcoming it, but the way that we deal with a relapse can change the trajectory of our recovery. So relapse can bring us into a shame spiral or it can be a stepping stone to a new pathway. Those are two very different paths, very different ways to go. So a little bit about the science of shame and what's happening in the brain so whenever we go into shame, it ignites the limbic system, which is this stress response, fight or flight. Um, just like I've got to do something, I'm in trouble. And what that does is it shuts off the front part of the brain, the more evolved part of our brain this is our learning center, prefrontal cortex. So limbic system, prefrontal cortex. So Shame hijacks the pre the the limbic system. And when this part of our brain is online and active and alive, it shuts down the prefrontal cortex. And we need this part of our brain to do the harder thing. This is where our learning centers are. This is where doing the harder thing fuel is. This is where our impulse control lives. But when we're in shame, it cuts us off from all of that. So, you know, you just imagine you have a relapse. What you need to do is you need to do something different. A relapse shows us that adaptive measures need to be taken. We can investigate. We can be investigating what the triggers were what we can do different next time using the contrast of the conflict to set us up for success in the future. But we can't do that if we can't get up into the learning centers of the brain. So what do we do? First, while we're not relapsing, while we're here in and active in the prefrontal cortex, we begin to destigmatize have a relapse plan of what to do. Begin to, to normalize it. We're not inviting relapse, but the more that we demonize it, the harder it is to get out of that shame and to do, to do something different. So, Wisdom in a relapse. How can we say we manage to stay out of the shame and you know, we realize that, okay, here I am again. You know, this is happening again. I'm deep in a bottle or I'm, well, you know, whatever, whatever the behavior is. First, we realize and remember that we haven't lost everything that as soon as we realize that we are off the path, that awareness is the first step towards coming back. So whenever we catch ourselves, I teach this in meditation too, whenever we catch ourselves lost in thought, don't be like, damn it, you know, I'm thinking again. It's like, oh, ding, awareness, now I can turn home. Let that be the first step home. So whether you're sitting in meditation, whether you realize that you've reacted, um, to your partner again, rather than responding, um, or whether you, you know, find yourself with substance in hand. Okay, here I am. Awareness first creates the space to make a different choice. So coming, coming back. 
And then we can use the relapse as an investigation to choose, um, not to choose, but to, to discover clues. Can we objectively observe, you know, what, what's going on here? What's happened? And then how can I navigate this in the future? There's invaluable information in this. And this is also something that we practice on our yoga mat and we practice in meditation of observing and trying, trying to watch, trying to observe. Everything that we do on our mat or on our cushion is, is a metaphor for what we do off our mat. Because whenever we're in the thick of things, you know, we practice in safety on our mat. So whenever things get really hairy and edgy, we kind of have these tools. So we practice this, this observation and this investigation not getting caught in the, in the shame of it and just noticing though and taking that gold, that the wisdom and we build from that. We build our foundation and our architecture from that. So I encourage you to have, to have a plan. Pre-plan, what's my voice of addiction? What is, what does it sound like? What do I say? You know, cause we want to be aware of the thoughts that come in. For me, often I would think like, um, you deserve it. And something that I would say, or you're an adult. You can have a glass of wine and I would do something like that. I'd kind of get like my voice of addiction has snappy fingers. Definitely just fuck it, you know. High stress, stress is one of the main factors, pre, you know, pre factors, what's the word? Precursors to, to relapse. So it's really watching our stress, our stress level. Where can we um, pull back on things that are highly stressful for us? This is where boundaries come into place. Where can we put up boundaries in order to protect ourselves from the stress that lowers our ability to respond in, um, in healthier ways. Cause we know our unhealthy response and we like to do the easier thing, especially when we're stressed. And the easier thing is to drink or use or to scream or whatever it is. So really watching the stress, knowing the voice of addiction, you're kind of realizing these precursors, these markers, what emotions, are most challenging for you? Like when is the veil thin? Like when I'm really angry, when I'm, um, for me, one of mine was when I'm celebratory, when I wanted to celebrate something, it's like that went hand in hand with alcohol or party or whatever. So realizing where these triggers are and then being around people who are safe. Having an exit strategy, if you're going out somewhere where people are partying, being with somebody who's sober. So lots of little things that we don't realize and we won't understand until we investigate. You know, we have to take a step back and look at our habitual patterns and look at the things that we're doing, what's working, what isn't working. We're really engaging the learning center here and the impulse control doing the harder thing prefrontal cortex flex. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. But the more that we get emotionally attached and the more that our limiting beliefs come up around, like, I can't do this. I'm not good enough. I'll never figure this out. You know, this gets this shame going, which remember is shutting off the part of our brain that we want active prefrontal cortex. So it's staying out of this, you know, coming back, staying empowered. I can choose. I can choose when I make space, I can choose. Boundaries help us to make that space. And a few other things about um, relapse that I'll just throw in here real quick, which are not little side notes, but just for, just for time's sake. Um, what's the plan? Who are you gonna call prior? Where's your safety zones? Is it a place? Is it a person who, what, when, where for triggers and for safety? Maybe there's a certain time of day that triggers you. 
Maybe there's certain places most likely that trigger you or remind you. So the who, what, when, where of trigger and same as safe of safety. Are there certain places that ease you? Are there certain, um, certain music, certain, um, you know, people who you feel safe with. It's all about regulation and we're wanting to regulate safety, staying out of the stress and hypervigilance and fear and regulate ease and safety and soothing. So then say, you know, we, we have relapsed. What are you going to do then? Who are you going to call? How are you going to reach for help? Often, Not often, I would highly suggest that you think about this prior because it's hard to use the rational parts of our brain once we're already like, ah, what have I done? So putting some free, some pre-thought in, into this of how we get back on track, how are we gonna keep ourselves together? I think this mantra I've been using lately is I will not abandon myself. You know, even if I feel like I screwed up, even if I, I did screw up or whatever, we can make mistakes, we will. But instead of going down the shame spiral, which is essentially abandoning ourselves, you know, I love this mantra, I will not abandon myself. I will not abandon myself. So maybe that resonates with you something, or maybe there's something else, you know, a mantra that you can come to, something easy that you can remember. I think can be really powerful. And then getting back on, taking agency. You know, addiction is disempowering. It's a loss of control. So any agency that we can take when we're like, I'm doing something different. I'm going to do the harder thing. I'm going to call someone. I'm going to, you know, reach out and share this with someone. I refuse to abandon myself and be stuck in shame on this. Don't relapse and not tell anyone. Because the secrecy is shaming. We need, you need to tell someone. That's owning it. That's agency. That's empowerment. And that is vital fuel to getting back on the track. So... Lots of ramble there. There's wisdom in a relapse. Do what you can to not abandon yourself, to stay out of shame. And even if you, you know, want to think about it biologically, is that I need this impulse control. I need my learning centers in order to shift. So if that's what keeps you kind of wanting to come back out, you know, do, do what you can. Take what resonated from this, if anything did, and implement and... Um, and also remember to be gentle. Ease up on you when you can. Relapse does happen. It doesn't have to happen. It doesn't have to be part of your story, but it's part of most people's stories. So don't stigmatize it. Don't shame it. Don't abandon yourself when you need you the most and reach out to someone, keep the connections happening. Keep your experience shared and flowing. That's a practice in itself. Feeling our feelings, sharing our feelings. You would be amazed at the power of connection. That's well, the biggest thing that I find in the community at, at Emerge and everybody finds is just the power of being able to share what is going on for us and have that reflected back, invaluable. So practice that wherever you can. Relationships, community. It's a salve. All right, that's it. <laughs>